The, uh, the object of the exercise uh, for this webinar is to take a practical look at Revision Manager in terms of what it does, how it does it, why we should use it in the first place, uh, and then we'll introduce a couple of other useful tools uh, as we go through the session. It should take about 25 minutes or so. So the, the reason why we would use Revision Manager would be to, uh, to copy files around, so whether or not that's between one folder and another folder on my workstation, or between one workstation and another workstation, or workstation and the server, then um, it's for sort of in, uh, copying one or more files, um, storage files from, from one location to another. It can also be used uh, for restructuring uh, assemblies and, uh, and drawings as well, replacing files renaming files, revising files, that's the object of the exercise. So um, can't I just do that in Windows? Just before we move on to the next slide, let's just have a look at, at kind of Windows and the impact it has, what we can use it for, and just a review of how functionally it works. I'm sure we're all aware, but there is an impact in using it. So I've got on my workstation a couple of project folders. Uh, this particular project folder has a top-level drawing and a top-level assembly, and the rest of the parts, the solid edge bits and pieces, are all in a set of subfolders. There aren't that many parts in there, but they're quite, it's quite easy to navigate to the information that I'm interested in because there's a logical folder structure to it. If we go back up one level and have a look at this second project folder, the, all the files that are in the original project are in here, and to be fair, there are um, some more besides that. Um, but it's just really to illustrate, that, okay, I've got to scroll up and down. There's a lot more information in here. I think it's probably fair to, to say that sort of, assuming you're using the details view, you might be using one of the other views uh, to look at your files in Windows, but anything more than about 20 files, maybe 30, then I've got to start scrolling up and down the list. If I just throw everything into a single folder, it tends to make it a little bit more difficult to find what I'm after. So restructuring the information in here, how would I achieve that? That's the sort of thing that we're after. So a logical folder structure certainly helps finding files in Windows in any case. So should I use, can I just use Windows for this? Can I use Solid Edge, the Revision Manager, to move files around. Why should I be using this Revision Manager tool in the first place? Well, if you've just created, this slide here is really just to illustrate um, a scenario where I've got perhaps an individual part file. I've created a completely new part file in Solid Edge. Um, I haven't got a drawing of it. It's not in an assembly. I've just created it, saved it, closed it. Then, barring one or two <coughs> unusual scenarios, that file does not have a link to anything. So I can just drag it around, cut and paste it, copy and paste it from one folder to another in Windows if I happen to have saved it in the wrong place or I want to put it somewhere else. But as soon as that file has been pushed into a CAM program, maybe you've got a copy of, a, copy of it in FEMAP or it's in an assembly or it's got a drawing, then there is a link between the part file and the file that it is in. So there's a, there's a, when you open the drawing of a part file, it knows where that file is stored in Windows. And what impact that has is that if we look at this project folder here, if I look at the subassemblies folder, actually what I've got in here is the subassembly and all of the parts in that folder. It might make sense perhaps to have those files in the parts folder instead. So I can fence select the files that I want to move. Control X on the keyboard will do a cut. We can go back up one level, I can go to the parts folder, right click paste or control V would work fine there, but I can, you know, Windows is nice and easy for, for moving files around. Does that have an impact on what I've, uh, does it have an impact on any of the files in, uh, in Solid Edge? Well, if we open up the top level drawing, then um, drawing view, yeah, it's not very happy. Um, let's just have a quick look at the assembly as well. Um, then. The information I can see there isn't, doesn't match what was shown on the drawing. And if we expand the subassembly, then yet sure enough, the, the parts are not being displayed. So that's not really doing what I want it to. So we'll close those files. That hasn't done. It, clearly, Windows is not doing. It's not changing the link between the files just by cut and pasting or copying and pasting. So if we go back to the subassemblies folder and uh, a Control Z, we'll do an undo. At least I can undo that move I've just performed. I don't have to be in this subassembly folder to do that, but uh, just to show you that the files have been um, removed from that parts folder and put into this subassembly folder. Uh, I just opened the folder to show that. So if we go back and have a look perhaps at the 
at the draft file again, then in Solid Edge, then uh, then the uh, the uh, the view's fine. There's no out of date. There's no uh, broken links. But so what do I do then to to change the links uh, in this draft file? Well, I would open it in Revision Manager, perhaps. So uh, the easiest way to do that is to right-click on a file and use the uh, the open option from the shortcut menu, which then opens that file into uh, Revision Manager. Um, the, uh, the the drawing or the assembly or the part is then displayed in a, in, a, in a window, and we have a toolbar across the top that we can use to select files, perform actions, um, set actions on files, etc. Let's have a look at some of these tools. Actually, if we expand all, then we can see the assembly structure. You can use the little check boxes, little plus marks next to each of the files to do that manually if, if the assembly is a little bit bigger than just uh, a dozen parts or so. So what we wanted to do perhaps is, is manipulate some of these files. I'm just going to go through some of the tools that we've got here. We can select all of the files using the buttons across the top. You can also select files using the buttons to the left. Click and drag or individually click will allow you to select files. You can use the control key held down to select non-sequential parts. Or if I select the bottom item and hold the shift key and select the top part, it'll select everything in between as well. You can also use the button just in the top left-hand corner there where my mouse is at the moment. And that will also perform a select all. So there's various ways of selecting files as we've seen a number of actions that we can perform. Let's have a look at how they uh, might work. We've got uh, the, the select files option. Maybe I'm interested in uh, a scenario here might be uh, in, a, in an R&D phase, perhaps we name files a particular, a particular way, but once we've got them ready for drawings or ready for sort of uh, design development, then uh, we rename files perhaps. So what I want to do here is just run a quick um, a quick search for any of the files that have ball in the name. So you can use an asterisk there as a wildcard. If I press select or enter, it runs off and finds all the files that have ball in the name. So we can close that dialog box. Maybe I want to rename those. They all need to be changed. We can do a rename operation, and then you can start using this replace tool here. So actually, what I want to do is replace ball, and we're going to replace that with a, with a product code something like that, replace all, and you can see it goes in and changes the name of everything. <clears throat> and clearly, if I just renamed uh, a file in Windows, then it would do what it did before. It would break the link between the drawing and the part, or the part and the assembly. So by performing this renaming operation in uh, Revision Manager, uh, we are retaining the links between documents. Actually, what we'll do is we'll do a select all. And we'll just clear action. So I don't want to, uh, to actually change those just at the moment. I uh, will uh, will just clear the action so that we can um, we can do uh, we can just show you a few other examples. Perhaps I want to create a new drawing version. There's a new drawing and there's a new assembly because I'm going to end up creating a revision of this housing part. So I can select those files. Perhaps we would use here select set action to copy. You can also right click in the action co action column and gain shortcuts uh, to, uh, to a lot of the tools that you can access through toolbars. <clears throat> what that also then gives us access to is a few extra buttons in here, things like increment name. What that does is it allows you to change the revision letter. So you can see some of these files have got a revision letter to them. If I click on increment name, it will automatically <clears throat> up revise the file, give it a, a new revision letter. It can also and has done, appended the file name, so it's put a dash B. If the file doesn't have a uh, revision letter in it, then it may, um, you can define what it, whether it should use numbers or letters, but in this case, uh, it's used a number if I don't like that, and actually that should be um, a B. You can click into the file name here and just change it. I used tab there, didn't I? That's not what I wanted. Click once to highlight the file name, click again to get into the file name, and then you can, um, use tab to scroll across the field so I can update I can rename the files manually that way as well so that might I, I then if I wanted to go ahead and create those files click on perform actions okay. again we'll select all I don't want in this case want to uh, want to change or, or, or create a new revision of these files but that was just to illustrate a point so we'll clear action what we were going to do is we were going to move these files so it's the, the four part files that are in the sub assembly need moving 
So in this case, I will use this set action to rename. And rename can really be considered rename uh, and move as well. Okay, so it's the renaming process can be actually physically change the file name or physically change the, the path name to it as well. So it's kind of a twofold operation there. So having done that, we can use this set path tool to go away and pick up on the folder that we want to move these parts into. That's the parts folder. You can see it's changed the path here, but we could if we wanted to, say, go in and change some of the names here as well. So just as like I did when we had a quick look at that um, uh, um, up revising process, creating new copies. We could click into the file name here and change it, just change uh, change the, uh, the name of the file. So we would, in order to action that change, in order to move those files around, we click on perform actions. Uh, we can expand all again. And we can see that the, the, the parts have, uh, have been moved. If we have a look in Windows, then have a look at the parts folder. Yeah, the parts are in there, subassemblies folder, just the subassembly uh, is in there. So if we have a look at the drawing, let's open that in Solid Edge. Uh, then there's no gray border, there's no, there's no issues. We can double click to open up the, uh, the assembly and all the files are there. So the links have been have been changed. So Revision Manager works really well when you're moving sort of individual files or a group of files between one folder and another. You may find that um, if, you, if, if I just wanted to move this entire project folder from one location to another, it's on my workstation, maybe I want a copy of it on the server, you can cut, or actually we'll do a copy in this case, I'll copy it from my workstation. If we go up a couple of levels here, there's a, I've got a, a drive, a storage drive perhaps, right click and paste, then the entire project folder goes in there. If we open it up and I open up that, this drawing again into Revision Manager, I've, I left the, uh, the one in the background, but if we do an expand all on this, it's changed the drive letter to all these files, and there's no, there's no red text, there's no broken links there at all. So you can do that when you're moving an entire folder. <clears throat> it's worth testing it, first of all, but, uh, but generally that works pretty well. But if, it's, if you're moving individual files around and restructuring, then, uh, then Revision Manager is the tool to use to retain those links. So that seemed to work pretty well on the whole. <clears throat> so um, the only proviso here might be actually, I've got a drawings folder. Actually, we'll go back to the, uh, the, the folder on the C drive. So there's a working folder here, and there's my project folder. There is a drawings folder here with, uh, with a few drawings on it. Um, what I've done in Revision Manager already uh, might have an impact on some of these drawings. If some of those parts I've just moved have got drawings, then is the link being broken or not so this drawing here is if that's a drawing of the, one of the parts I've just moved from that sub assembly folder then well is it has it broken the link let's have a look well it has so this dashed gray board around the, the around the drawing views indicates that the links broken completely it can't go away and find uh, the file that we've moved so I needed to be a little bit more careful and we'll come back to that in a second but can I re-establish the link well I can and you can do this in solid edge so application drop down menu manage edit links will pop up a dialog box where this is the, this is the uh, the path to the uh, to the file that's on the drawing we'll change the source and we'll come up a couple of levels and into the parts folder and that's the file that this is a drawing of yeah we'll do that close and i don't need to update any of the drawing views fair enough there aren't any dimensions in here it's just to illustrate how the link can be retained but if there had been dimensions everything would have updated i don't need to update any of the drawing views <coughs> The, uh, the link has been re-established. So we can do that in Solid Edge, re-establishing um, the link between one file and another. So let's just have a look at, um, again, at, a, at a, a scenario perhaps where I want to kind of establish a folder structure in here because I am finding it difficult. There's a lot of more data going in here and there's going to be a lot more because this project's going to another 50 odd parts or 20 parts or whatever it is and a load of other documentation. How might I approach that? restructuring what's in this folder well uh, what I'll do here is is we'll look to, to move the not only the parts and sub assemblies but also create that drawing folder as well and make sure that we capture everything when we do this and what I mean by capture is make sure all the links are retained so we'll open up the the top level assembly perhaps in revision manager I'm going to close the um, the uh, the other the other um, entry that we've got um, the other file that's open in Revision Manager at that stage. <clears throat> so here's our, our current top level assembly. So what we're going to do is we'll use perhaps select by type here. So I want to be able to go ahead and select all the parts. We're going to rename them 
and we're going to change the path. So in this case, that's the project folder we looked at before. This is the project folder where these files are. So I'm going to create a new folder in there and call it part. And you can see it updating. So what this, what the, the way that the information is laid out in Revision Manager, here's the current files in the current document tree. This is what we're doing to it, to those files. And this is what uh, the new file part is going to look like. Those are some of the key columns. So what we've also then would like to do perhaps is uh, select the assemblies and again uh, rename it and we'll set a path and again we'll perhaps we'll create a new folder. Just make sure you pick the project folder otherwise we're gonna it was going to create a new folder inside of the part folder. That's not quite what I'm after and we'll call this ASM. And what we'd like to do here is, I know that there's some drawings of all these parts and assemblies. I need to move those as well. They're not listed here. How can I get hold of them? Well, one of the key tools here to help us with this is uh, is this where used search. So you can see it's grayed out. If nothing's selected, so uh, or Vision Manager doesn't know where to go, what to go and look for. So we'll select everything, click on where used. What I'm interested in doing here is finding all of the links between the documents that I've got selected. Um, and, the, and the rest of the files that are in those folders. Finish. Typically, what you do find is it is that you, you the where you searches appear in the bottom in the bottom window. You can see I'm clicking and dragging the um, the the, uh, the sort of split split bar uh, up and up up just to to show uh, the full results. I might just expand these uh, or maximise the uh, the display here just to help us with this. So you can see that uh, all of the items listed in the top window are listed in the bottom window, but there's also some unchanged items as well. And if we have a look at those, then it has picked up. There's an additional assembly here, but it has picked up um, the drawings for those parts that have drawings. So what we could do, as long as you've got an item selected in this bottom window, then we can go ahead and select by type. If I just click in the top window and select by type, notice that draft is grayed out. That's not really what I want so I'm going to pick an item in the bottom window select by type drafts available to me I can probably mark up checked but we'll turn it off click on OK <clears throat> all of the drawings are, uh, are selected we can set to rename set path just like we did before pick the project folder and we can create a new drawing folder that goes in there click on OK and at the moment nothing has actually been actioned yet so perform actions if we click on that it, um, Solid Edge will run off and uh, and create, or Revision Manager will run off and create those folders. So here's the here's our original folder. These folders weren't there a minute ago, but all of the drawings, the top level drawing included, has been moved across into these folders. <clears throat> so uh, so that we can use Revision Manager to do that. So again, a general restructure of all of the data. Um, that we were that we were uh, interested in, uh, in in moving around. Just having a look at um, perhaps one of one or two of the other components in this folder. There are some parts that haven't been moved across. Don't appear to have any links. Let's just open that part file up in uh, in Solid Edge. Um, so maybe I'm interested in finding out whether or not this file is used anywhere in particular. And again, although we we can run uh, where used searches in uh, in Solid Edge as well. You don't have to be in Revision Manager to do that. If I click on where used, we'll, we'll search in this project folder that where we've just restructured some of the data. And actually, um, this part is okay. Is used in a couple of assemblies, um, but uh, those assemblies aren't anything that I'm I'm really uh, interested in. We uh, we're going to move them somewhere else. Perhaps we'll just remove them from this project folder. So, where it says this nested where used not performed, what does that mean? Well, it's <coughs> Solid Edge. When the data is unmanaged, when it's not catalogued anywhere, then then it doesn't. Uh, then the where you search only looks for one level, so it's not looking to see whether or not there's a drawing of this assembly or whether or not that assembly is used anywhere else. You can run a where you search on that if I want to, but that's what you, one of the advantages of having your documents managed is that you will find that it will automatically list a lot more documents here whether or not there's a drawing, say whether or not there's a drawing of this assembly uh, and, uh, and, and, uh, and whether or not it's, uh, it's uh, in a higher level assembly as well. But that can be useful, the, the just a general where used search um, run from, uh, from Solid Edge can be useful and you can also go ahead and, and open those documents as well. Let's pop back to uh, 
to the PowerPoint for a second. So that is a, a sort of general, a manual uh, manipulation, restructuring, copying of files using revision manager and retaining links as well. So there is a, a, um, a an assistant tool as well that can that can help you a little bit. So if we pop back to um, to revision manager again on this tools tab where we had a quick look at the where you search, there is a an assistant tool and you can use this. It, it kind of comes up with a number of wizard style steps that can help you. Um, to copy files or move files, perform a particular action on a set of files. So again, maybe we'll just lay out a quick scenario here. <clears throat> I want to, I've got a sub-assembly on my server and we, it's ready for manufacture. All the files in it, maybe it's these files that are in this handle and ball and actually what we'll do is we'll, we'll close these files. As long as, you don't have to have any files open in Revision Manager, you just have to have the Revision Manager tool open to access the assistant. What perhaps we'll do is we'll, we'll copy a file. I want to go ahead and copy that sub-assembly. So if we go up to, we'll just assume that this is on the on the server. I want to, I really want the parts that are in this sub-assembly. So we'll open that up. I want to copy all the files that are in that assembly. What I'm going to do, what, what the, say perhaps the target here is we'll run, we're going to run a batch converter to create a load of IGES files and then we're going to send those off to the manufacturer. But because these files are in a sub-assembly, I don't want the top-level assemblies to start looking at the files I'm just about to create on my workstation, which is why I've picked this bottom radio button here, because I'm just going to throw them away. If I was creating a new revision and I wanted the references that all of the parts, all of the, sorry, all of the higher-level assemblies to use the, the copy I'm about to create, then I'd use the top one. So yeah, don't, don't, uh, don't let any, um, any existing references look at these files, the ones I'm just about to create. And we're going to, I'm going to just going to copy them into, uh, onto the temp drive. Maybe I've got a temp drive on my workstation. I can run the batch converter and then throw them away, those solid edge files. Click on next. Just a quick prompt to show you that, um, solid edges or revision manager is going to set this up for us. So here's our, here's our assembly. Here's all the parts. And actually this particular part, the, the sub assembly itself, I don't need. So we'll right click and clear action on that. But everything else, it's going to create a copy of those files and put them into Actually, that doesn't look like it's set the path to the temp folder. Maybe I'll do, let's just change that. Let's put it in temp. That's better. Perform actions, and it's created a copy of those files. So that's another way of kind of accessing these tools uh, is to use this revision manager command as well. And one of the advantages of using revision manager, especially if you're using or moving a top-level assembly or top-level drawing, is that it can recreate the folder structure for you a little bit more easily than doing it manually in the revision manager. What you'd almost have to do in Revision Manager, the example I showed earlier when we restructured that data in that second project folder, I created three folders manually. Now, if if that data had all, if that folder structure had already been there, and I just picked the top level drawing, and I needed to move it somewhere else, then I could have got um, the assistant tool to recreate those folders for me, rather than having to go and create them manually. So that's one of the advantages of the assistant tool. Okay. Is there anything else? So that, is there anything else that I can help to keep links or to to reestablish links um, for for solid edge files? There are. Um, so the first item there, help with linked CAD files. I was going to cover a topic, but I'm actually going to leave it for a later date. There's a, there's a useful tool. I'll mention it anyway. But there's a useful tool called Link Management, which you can set up through file locations, which I'm going to cover in a future session. But we will look at. Uh, copying files to a new server. If I, uh, uh, perhaps our, our, again, a scenario is our, our current server or um, <clears throat> is, is getting a little bit old. It's running out of it's running out of space. We've got a new server or a new storage device. We want to copy all of the data on our current server across onto the new server. We're happy with the, with the folder structure. It's pretty much just a drive letter change. Then there is the potential that you might just be able to copy and paste. But if you can't. Then again, in the Tools tab here, there's a Redefine Links tool that you can use. So you can copy the data. It's worth running a test on this. And again, perhaps this gives a call if you are thinking of doing this or have a requirement for it. Is to take is to is to to to, to use a sample data set to do to on this and copy it from one location to another. If when you open up, if you open up perhaps the top level assembly in Revision Manager and it it's still pointing to the original files, then uh, this this redefine links tool can uh, can say help to to resolve that help to change the links and so there's an extensive help file here redefining links really useful information 
in here about how that works. But that's a useful tool if you're on mass moving a large amount of data from one folder to another. Just one other little point. If you are moving files or restructuring information in Revision Manager, just make sure you've got the file closed in Solid Edge. If the file, if you've got an assembly or drawing open in Solid Edge, then Solid Edge has right access to it, and Revision Manager does not. So it's just like a Word document. I can't have a a tech. I can't have a Word document open in Word and open in another application and be able to edit both of them from the same uh, at the same time. So just be careful. It's almost worth making sure that you close any file or close Solid Edge completely if you're making some modifications or, or restructuring data and files using Revision Manager. So hopefully that's given you an overview, uh, made you feel more comfortable with the tools or some of the capabilities uh, of Revision Manager. We've looked at what it does and how it does it and, and specifically how, why we should use it as well. So um, Solid Edge files have links between them and we need to maintain them to make sure that our our drawings and parts and assemblies are all nicely linked together. If you do have any specific questions, um, then feel free to, uh, to drop me a line. Um, I hope you've uh, found this uh, session uh, useful. Uh, thank you.